Have you ever wondered why Netflix series are so bingeable? So bingeable, in fact, that it could be three hours past your bedtime, two hours past the time you said this is the last one, yet you find yourself compulsively clicking next episode. Or maybe you've wondered why it is that the songs that stick in your head day after day after day are the ones to which you can't quite remember all of the words. You see, the same thing that keeps you compulsively watching Netflix series is the same thing that actually keeps these half songs stuck in your head, slipping out secretly through the quiet hums when you go unconscious. In fact, it's actually the same thing that applies when your partner or your spouse texts you in the morning, we need to talk. And then all throughout the entirety of the day, your thoughts are consumed with trying to figure out, what's this conversation I'm going to have to have? Now, this simple trick is so powerful and effective that when you apply it to your sales process, it's going to be really, really challenging not to captivate your customer's attention and close a lot more sales. However, this is not something that applies in terms of exactly here in your sales process. You must say just this. Instead, it is a universal principle that can be applied throughout a variety of contexts to influence those to whom you're talking in order to captivate attention and keep them listening. This can also be used to implant beliefs over the course of hypnotic storytelling. Now, we don't have time to get quite into those specifics, but by the end of this video, I'll share with you a variety of situations in which you can use the concept called open loops to make a lot more sales. But you must pay close attention because only getting this halfway will do more harm than good. And chances are you're going to want to rewatch this video a few times. So pay close attention as I share my screen. And we're going to be breaking down the concept of open loops and how they work so effectively to captivate attention, allowing you to make a lot more sales. Now that I've got my own version of the handy dandy slide deck pulled up, let's go ahead and look at some practical examples. Now, when I am running a masterclass or I'm on stage giving a talk on sales, this is one of my favorite methods of creating an open loop in someone's brain to keep them engaged and captivated throughout the presentation while also seeding the sale from the first thing that I do on the back end. So I will say, for example, all right, so today we're going to shortcut your next seven figures in sales. And I wish that I had time today to show you all of the keys that you will need in order to do so. For example, like the objection handling matrix, breaking down belief systems, hypnotic storytelling to implant beliefs, indirect selling to pre-handle objections before they even come up, and learning how to sell at scale. But unfortunately, Due to the fact that we only have about 30 minutes today, I'm going to focus on indirect selling to pre-handle objections because if you can't understand this, the rest will be irrelevant. But once you nail this, everything else will start to fall in place and you will be blown away by how powerful of a communicator you can become. So what I'm doing with this is I'm showing them, hey, so here's all the things you need in order to have this, right? But unfortunately, we don't have time to get into all of that today, so I'm going to hammer down on this one. In doing so, we're leaving all of these things as open loops in their brain. So if I tie my offer in at the end to being able to do this by capitalizing on all of these other things that they haven't yet learned, it will be a much more compelling offer. And in doing so, it allows me to actually put together a legitimately valuable presentation and over deliver, making them feel like, wow, this guy is not just some webinar quack that doesn't teach anything. You can teach, you can legit teach, but you've left open loops in their brain. So even though you're giving away some secret sauce, they have this feeling in the back of their mind that there's so much more that I could have. Next, you can use stuff like this in your content. So I actually noticed one of my buddies did a great job of this uh, a couple days ago in his content. He was breaking down subscription model businesses, right? And so he's like, they are, uh, there's three things that you need to have in order to do this. And so he breaks it all down, right? And then he says, seeing as how I've already fulfilled on my promise of adding this, 
to your business, how about we over deliver? I'll give you one third thing, something that is stupid simple, something that will frankly piss you off as to why you didn't do this thing sooner. That'll be the next post. Talk soon. Open loop. Open loop in your brain. It's compelling you to stick around and look for the next episode, right? Highly effective. You can also use this kind of concept, for example, in Messenger or on a triage call to actually seed the value of the call itself such that you have a much higher rate of people actually showing up for the calls and they show up excited for the calls. Instead of presenting a call like, well, hey, why don't we hop on a call and see if I can help you out? No, it's not compelling. However, if you were to say something simple like, well, I'm happy to break down for you what my most successful clients are doing to solve that issue. And it, it's probably more simple than you'd think. It's just a bit much to type out here. And I'm about to head out for dinner. So would it be appropriate if I suggested we find some time later this week so I can lay it out for you? Boom. Or let's say you're on a triage call, right? And you've now effectively diagnosed someone and it makes sense to book a sales call. Well, you want to have them asking questions. Like, oh my gosh. Well, how does that work? You go, Hey, I'm happy to break it down for, or happy to break down for you. What my most successful clients are doing right now to solve that issue. And frankly, it's probably a lot more simple than most people think. It's just a bit much to unpack here. And I'm about to head out the door for dinner. So why don't we do this? I'll take a look at my calendar, see if there's any open availability in the next two days, and we'll see if we can make something work. Sound good for you? Now, another way we can do this is like this, right? So dropping, hey, there's these things that you must have in order to accomplish result, and today I'm going to break down the one that the rest rely on to work. You can use this in a post, you can use this in a presentation. Uh, you can even do this when you're talking to someone at an event. You're like, oh man, you know, it's funny. My, my clients that have dealt with the same thing, um, they all fall into three categories. Like there's three things they need to focus on. And um, I mean, the first one is this, right? Start breaking it down. Oh shit, you know, I gotta, round, I, I gotta bounce. Maybe we could connect a little bit later on if it would make sense for you to look at the other two. One more thing. You can use this in the context of a sales interaction, right? So you are going through and diagnosing someone using the seven questions framework. So let's just say they have actually uncovered their pain points and they're like, well, what would you do about it? If you go to how, you're gonna sabotage your sale, okay? So don't ever go to how on calls. You can stick just to what and why, but an effective transition to leave that as an open loop in someone's brain is like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm, I mean, I can see actually what's going on. And it's a pretty simple fix actually, but you know, before we get into that, a couple more questions for you just to make sure we're on the right track. So you just leave it as an open loop in their brain. You are captivating interest the same way that Netflix does. I hope this is making sense for you. I suggest re-watching this video now at least twice to take note of all of the open loops that I have left for you because there are other examples that I didn't explain and it's just up to you to find out where they are.